um, hi. There was a forced migration in connection with the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. The conflict over Nagorno-Karabakh created an unregulated, chaotic, and often bloody exchange of populations among Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast, later de facto Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. On the Azerbaijani side, the conflict created more than 700,000 refugees and IDPs. An estimated 350,000 ethnic Armenians fled Azerbaijan in two waves in 1988 and 1990, after anti-Armenian violence in many directions, mostly for Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, Russia, and the US. The exchange of populations between Armenia and Azerbaijan took place before the military phase of the conflict. Armenian refugees from Azerbaijan fled the country under immediate threat uh, to their lives with all the uh, ensuing material property and moral losses. The aim of this paper is to contribute to the debates of, on uh, tra traumas during the ethnic pogroms and forced migration, as well as healing of traumatic memory. Based on empirical data obtained from ethnographic fieldwork and biographical interviews in three post-Soviet countries, this study explores the gender aspects of uh, trauma, trauma and uh, the nature of forced migration in the context of deprived conditions in the host society. The study combines a comparative dimension as well as micro-level perspective. These comparisons include transgenerational aspects of multiple traumas through uh, the prism of two or three generations of women and their coping mechanisms um, to heal the tra traumas. A um, couple of words about my research questions. Armenians from Azerbaijan are considered in specialized ethnographic literature as one of the most cosmopolitan subcultural group. During the Armenian-Azerbaijani conflict of 1988-1994, they had been subjected to numerous programs uh, which caused a traumatic experience that has specific gender aspects. However, when they fled to the more or less quote-unquote uh, culturally similar environment, instead of recovering from the trauma, they got a repetition of it, of it. In the framework of this study, I argue that Armenians from Azerbaijan have undergone uh, um, through multiple trauma experience, both as a result of hostile nationalism and um, intra-group tension. Unspoken horror many witnessed were poorly documented. The interviews are so far unique testimonies that tell us about a gripping personal account of Armenian refugees. Many of them, even if their stories are not here, went through the bitterness of, the, of this resistance. Most of them went uh, through multi-vector migrations before setting in Russia, Ukraine, and Europe, or Europe and US. The key questions I try to examine are what are the faces of gender trauma after the collapse of the USSR in the present days what strategies and coping mechanism use, mechanisms use refugees, IDPs, families in order to transform traumatic mem memories into vital life strategies? Are these multiple traumas become a problem for getting integrated into their whole societies? Um, um, a next block is related literature. Towards the ends, end of the 20th century, in particular, regional conflicts have taken a terrible toll on populations. With these development, the literature on war, refugees, and IDPs has increased. In particular, there is a growing emphasis on the impact of war on women. Um, see Br Brun, uh, 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 his work of 2000, 2005. 
the literature emphasized a number of concerns. First, the researchers faced to conceptual problems, for instance, how to define trauma, trauma and hard memory, what is the operational definition of diaspora. Second is the generation gap in the strategies of the coping of trauma. The third problematic angle is the refugees' reaction to the um, victimization and uh, marginalization. Trying to cover the conceptual gap, one can call the phenomenon of forced migration on Armenian, of Armenians from Azerbaijan, neither co-ethnic return. In case of Armenia, they never lived in their uh, quote-unquote homeland. That is uh, territory of Soviet Armenia, though their ancestors lived in Nagorno-Karabakh. No, one can call it, again, quote-unquote, diasporic homecoming, as in the USSR, co-ethnics living in brotherly, neighboring, but different republics, never were called diaspora. The term was usually applied for Western Armenians who moved to the Euro-Atlantic countries, mostly uh, after 1915 genocide in Ottoman Empire. Actually, I argue that all refugees before 1991 could be defined uh, IDPs because the Euro, the Euro, they were citizens of the same country, USSR. Upon um, uh, uh, incorporating the impact of migration process on post-conflict gender roles and relations into my analysis, it can be deduced that in academic scholarship, gender migration is largely discussed in terms of causing contradictory experience. See France, Lefebvre, Mar Markovic, and Manderson. As for the central concepts of collective trauma, it looks seen, and this is why it's scrutinized by Jeffrey Alexander et al. in their numerous studies. In, in their volume entitled Trauma, a Social Theory, they investigated social suffering on a broad scale. The chapters of the book, um, I'm quoting, address ex exploitation and violence, war and genocide, the massacre of innocence and intense religious, economic, ethnic, and racial strife, end of quotation. As a researcher working with uh, a, a empirical data, I detect traumas through trauma narratives. One of the central narrative narratives is trauma of loss, which speaks loudly about um, materiality and pragmatic, pragmatics of social suffering, material forces, are deeply implicated in social suffering, says Jeffrey, Jeffrey Alexander. Trying to understand how a cultural process channels powerful human emotions and to what effect newly obtained attitude to possession can be discussed. Laura from Russia teaches her three doctors and grandchildren, no need to buy anything, no furniture or pottery. One needs only portable and hidden possession. Otherwise, perpetrators will attack. One is too vulnerable. Just live every day as it would be your last day. Eagerness to earn portable capital because of the trauma of losses of possession, hardly earned in the time of Soviet scarcity, is mentioned virtually in every interview. Other informants uh, were talking about the material subject and other artifacts they possess in Baku, hours and hours. Laura was doing the same talking about her three daughters' dowries, wrapped in Azerbaijan by pogrom perpetrators, and whatever she was able to rescue was annihilated during the bombardments in her ancestral home in Karabakh, uh, at the same as the site of her uh, initial migration. Again, Laura cannot forget the every single item of her three daughters' dowries con conflated with great difficulties in the context of minimalistic Soviet material culture and those specific images in her mind chronically haunted, haunting her 
psyche. A substantial part of that material loss is hardly tangible because this is about the uh, this is about the long-term investments both at the ethnic Azerbaijani and Armenian weddings, Armenians uh, wedding, and, uh, wedding and funeral ceremonies. The interruption and loss of the stable long-term relationships and regular exchanges cause the loss of economic and different types of cultural capitals. It was aggravated by the almost complete loss of human capital. Um, here, I actually mean the professionalization of Azerbaijani Armenians in Armenia, Nagorno Karabakh Republic, and in Russia during the harsh social competition, and as a result of linguistic chauvinism in the newborn titular, quote unquote, Armenian uh, nation state, titular is quote unquote. Um, memory of uh, on space and loss of home is another big traumatic narrative. Trying to grasp generational trauma, I choose Armenian refugees from capital Baku and different Azerbaijani towns. Throughout history, Armenians had an influence on the city through monuments and ar architecture, which has since been erased. Armenians have been removed from all the tourist literature. Most of their uh, monuments uh, have vanished and their cemeteries have been vandalized and defaced. Uh, very few said they would ever go back even if they were allowed to. And those that expressed a curiosity to visit uh, said that they would only want to see the neighborhoods where they lived and the school cemeteries and promenade routes. Uh, Rena said with bitterness, they construct highway on our cemeteries. I don't want to go there to my home city of Baku. I don't want to see my family history erased under the asphalt. The shut door in this case means they have no way to go back and this makes older generation feel even more frustrated and traumatized. The strategy of younger generation is quite different. One can say more optimistic. Rena's daughter is trying and active, to actively do something in order to heal the memory of atrocity. Um, so rather than lament as her mother and grandmother continue to do, she chose action over words. The next fr frequently spoken topic is the politics of difference in the in host communities, uh, feeling themselves uprooted and unwanted. Baku Armenians that came to Armenia had a hard time. One of the examples of both covertly and overtly expressed co-ethnic interaction accompanied by intra-group tension was and still continue is the case of Armenian refugees from Azerbaijan, uh, both in, in de facto Nagorno-Karabakh Republic in, and in Armenia. Um, uh, so, A difference is also organized hierarchically, says Brah. While Nagorno Karabakh Armenians previously had a lower status than Azerbaijani Armenians and were perceived as quote unquote uh, poor and rustic rural, now they appeared in a slightly ele elevated position by providing refuge to their own people who formerly. Uh, had a better position, like Dachniki, Garatsky, Urban. In Armenia, the struggle for proper, uh, quote-unquote, identity runs even more deeply. Also, the body of the difference was constructed in, li in linguistic otherness, Russian instead of Armenian, or, or Harabari dialect instead of literary, literary, literary Armenian. Cosmopolitan and professional identities urban lifestyle and manners, specifically, especially gender behavior. Special derogatory names like 
upside down Armenian Skelma, Turkic word for newcomer, became a foundation for their everyday marginalization and prejudice. Small differences become a base of mm, othering. A social theory of collective trauma says that cross-culturally trauma coping mechanism has its own peculiarities and trends such as gender and age differences. Women and youngsters overcome the trauma uh, easier than other social groups who got traumatized in the same ways. According to my study, we can see some contradictions. Um, Women, women as well as elderly people have more difficulties to heal the tra trauma even though the previous studies of the situation of social cataclysm was showed the opposite, have showed the opposite um, fundings, findings, and namely that women cope this stressful situation better than men. My preliminary hypothesis is that the point is, and retroactively so, that they lost their home, with capital letter home, and environment as a center of their universe. And the home stands for the locus where they spend the most of their time. Uh, rape during the ethnic violence and pogroms as a, spe a special traumatic factor should be investigated separately. This trauma is directly connected to matrimonial strategies of refugees. Marriage is a way of coping of the situation, though in the context of a toxic masculinity, being victim of rape doesn't help to succeed in the, these uh, essential aspects and um, factor of successful integration. Thus summarizing the interviews, I, I came to the pre preliminary conclusion. The trauma Azerbaijani Armenians experienced during the atrocities and other genocidal behavior in Sumgait, Kirabad, and Baku, compounded by the trauma of verbal abuse and abuses and a sense of being second-rate citizens in their ancestral homeland, ancestral homeland caused by many to live their ancestral home and historical motherland again, quote unquote, and never look back. How exactly these angels are felt and configured uh, have not been either properly described or deeply conceptualized. And with this study, I tried to cover this gap. This gap. Thank you very much for your attention.